Hey Grace Kids, it's Mr. Gary. Welcome back to Grace Kids TV. We hope that you had a great Thanksgiving and now we get to look forward to Christmas. So the next couple weeks are really exciting as we look forward to the next holiday coming up. In today's Bible story, we are going to learn about how God's people were taken captive. Now I have a question for you. If you could be a king or a queen for one day, or like the president of the United States, what would you do? Maybe you would have free ice cream for everybody, or maybe no school for a day. Maybe something special, right? Well, kings and queens and presidents, they can use their power for good things. But in today's story, we are going to learn about how the people in Judah, they turned away from God. But we're also going to learn about how God disciples those that he loves so they can turn back to him and repent. Now, God was right to punish people for their sin, but he still kept his promise to provide a king through David's family. But ultimately, God punished our sin through his son, Jesus and he made Jesus king forever. But I don't want to get too much into today's story. Before we get any further, let's head over to Grace Kids Trivia and let's see what you remember from last week's story about Nahum warning against God's judgment. Good luck, everybody. Question one, true or false? Nahum was a prophet. And the answer is true. This was true. We've been learning about many different prophets over the last few weeks. But in last week's story, we learned about how Nahum went to Nineveh to share God's message. And that leads us to our next question of the day. Question two, true or false? Nineveh was in a country called America. And the answer is... False. This was definitely not true. Nineveh was in a country called Assyria. The people who lived in Assyria were called Assyrians, just like the people who live in America are called Americans. The Assyrians were mean. They fought with God's people. But Nahum still went and told the Assyrians God's message. He told them how people should not worship other gods. He told them how God is fair and also how powerful he is. Question three, true or false? Nahum told the Assyrians that when God comes to punish Nineveh, the mountains will shake and the earth will move. And the answer is true. Nahum did tell the Assyrians this. He then said that people would be afraid because God is so powerful. God is good. When bad things are happening, he can keep people safe. He takes care of people who know and love him. But the people in Nineveh did not know God. They didn't love him and they didn't trust him. God was going to punish them. But then God spoke to his people. And that leads us to our next question of the day. Question four, true or false? God said that the Assyrians have lots of people and strong armies, but that he would still win against them. And the answer is true. This was true. God told the people that they have been hurt, but they wouldn't be hurt anymore. God was going to set his people free. The message Nahum shared from God was bad news for the people of Nineveh, but it was good news for the people of God. God's people would live in peace. They could worship God and obey him. Their enemies would be gone. And our final question of the day, question five, true or false? God loves his people and takes care of them. And the answer is true. This is definitely true. Jesus has good news for people who love and trust him. All of the enemies of God were defeated at the cross, but one day Jesus will take away all bad things. It's me, Megan, and I'm Jessie. Jessie, you seem a little down. What's wrong? 
I got in trouble for being mean to my little brother, so my mom made me go to my room. And worst of all, I didn't get to watch my favorite show, Koala Karate Squad. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go to your room and miss your favorite show, Jesse. It's not fair. I'm so mad at my mom. Uh, Jesse, I know you're upset, but your mom was showing she loves you by sending you to your room. What? What do you mean? Being mean to your brother is not right. If your mom didn't teach you to do the right thing, you would think it's okay to do the wrong thing. Letting someone do the wrong thing is not loving them. Oh, I, I guess I see what you mean. I know it isn't fun, Jesse. Something similar happened in today's Bible story. God's people would not obey him. God loved his people, so he had to do something hard to teach them to obey. Let me tell you about it. Josiah, the king of Judah, had three sons, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. Josiah had a grandson too. His name was Jehoiakim. Each of them had a turn at being king. None of them was good like King Josiah. After Josiah died, Jehoahaz became king. Jehoahaz was not king for very long. He did bad things that God did not like. The king of Egypt took Jehoahaz away and made him a prisoner. So Jehoahaz's brother, Jehoiakim, became king. Jehoiakim also did what was wrong. The king of Babylon took Jehoiakim away and made him a prisoner. So Jehoiakim's son, Jehoiakim, became king. Jehoiakim also did what was wrong. The king of Babylon sent some of his servants to Judah. They took Jehoiakim to Babylon. The king of Babylon made Jehoiakim's uncle king. His name was Zedekiah. Zedekiah also did what was wrong. He led God's people to do wrong things too. God loved his people. He did not want to destroy them, so he sent prophets to talk to the people. The prophets said, stop sinning, love and obey God. But the people did not listen. It was time for God to punish the people of Judah for their sin. God allowed the king of Babylon and his armies to attack the people in Judah, and many of the people died. The king of Babylon took everything out of the Lord's temple and burned the temple. They tore down the wall that stood around the city of Jerusalem. The army destroyed anything that was left. The king of Babylon took the rest of the people to Babylon and he made them work for him and his family. All of this happened just as God said it would. God was right to punish his people because they sinned, but God still loved them and he was going to give his people a good king just like he said he would. Many years later, God sent his son Jesus to be our king forever. Jesus took the punishment we should get for our sin. Grace Church began about six decades ago, and it's just a tiny church plant from another Alliance Church in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, since that time has continued saying, what can we do to make a difference in our neighborhoods and in the nations of the world? The death ministry really began with the vision of one person, Jen Carrick, who began to have this passion to say, I think this is like an underreached, least reached kind of people when the numbers began to grow. There came a point where the church leadership said, hey, let's consider having a pastor here. We began to pray and just say, God, would you lead the right person uh, our way? 
I've been deaf all my life. When I was 15, I realized and need to surrender my life to really have a relationship with Jesus. And that's when I took ownership of my faith. I got an email from Grace Church. And I didn't know anything about Cleveland or Ohio or Grace Church or the CMA. My wife and I both knew that we had to do it. We had to step out in faith and obedience. us. We would be disappointed for the rest of our lives if we did. When I arrived at Grace, I had so much support that I didn't feel overwhelmed, but I didn't wonder if this was going to fail like in the first month or two. <laughs> Science of Grace Deaf Church was launched in 2015. That first service, I remember feeling, I hope I don't mess up. <laughs> we made some mistakes, sure, but it was the start of something new and special. We've seen over 30 in the past five years give their lives to Christ or be baptized. This year alone, we've had about eight. Those whose lives have been transformed by Jesus in the deaf community understand how much they missed in the past, and they want their friends and their families who are deaf and holy hearing to know that same truth. And they're doing as much as possible to reach the community for Jesus. We still feel the call to go to other deaf churches because there's nothing out there. Last week on Saturday, we started our second deaf church plant. That event got about 20 people, and they all said that they want to do this again because there's nothing like it. This is deaf reaching the deaf. A church's best evangelistic potential is in the first five years. So we as a church, we're like decades old. And so if we start new churches, we're just maximizing our potential to reach new people. Starting new churches can just continue to birth that vision or that evangelistic zeal within the hearts of God's people. Hey Grace Kids, we are here to do our craft today and I brought some friends and we just watched a video about the deaf church here at Grace. So I'm gonna let them tell you a little bit about themselves. This is Miss Heather. Hi, I'm one of the interpreters here at Grace Church. And this is Audra. Hi, my name is Audra and I am one of the deaf teens that attends the deaf church and the deaf youth group here. So they are here to help me show you how to do the craft. So all that you're going to need is one of the hands. The younger kids are going to get the hand with the fingers already down, and the older kids are going to get the hand that just looks like a normal hand. Then you need something to color with, some scissors, and one little red heart sticker. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this craft. Are you ready? All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do the one for the younger kids, and Audra's gonna show, show you the one for the older kids. So first we're going to color the hands. to cut her hand out. All right, so now what we're going to do, my fingers are already folded down because we are going to make the sign for I love you. So this is, my fingers are already folded down, so Audra is going to fold the two middle fingers down, and then you're going to put a heart sticker. I'm gonna put one like that. Perfect. And then we're gonna talk about exactly what this means. We are so excited for you to make this craft as well. And don't forget, this means I love you when you use, when you make your hand like this, it means I love you in sign language. And Audra's gonna tell you a little bit about why we made this. People who are unable to hear need to know the good news that Jesus loves them. God sent prophets to 
compel his people to love and obey God. God loves his people and takes care of them. Jesus has good news for people who love and trust him. We are super excited for you to make this craft and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks so much for watching Grace Kids TV. Have a great week.